Well, folks, we're in the old shaping room here. I thought we'd show you a little tricks of the trade here while we're doing it. You know, this, see these louvers right here? I use 12 inches. And what it does is it creates shadow shaping. So when you're shaping the deck of the board, you can see the symmetry in it. And that's how why shaping rooms have it like this. And then if you look back here, you have black. So the white against the black, you can see your curves really well. And that's how you want to get it shaped. But, you know, even back to the surfboards, I just run full concave flat back here. Then I do the same thing on the stand-ups, just a blown up high performance board. But one major important thing I do with the stand-ups too is I move those fins up. That is so important to move the fins up and in. Then it goes rail to rail better. And even on big waves, I got my fins in two and a half inches off the rail and I'm riding eight foot overhead waves, hitting turns hard and then it's not sliding at all. So you really don't need to get the fins on the rail either. you know. And of course we got all kind of different ones. The top one up there, that's a 10-6 gun for big waves and then the second one down is your basic long board and then uh, I'm building really a lot of these boards here right now these surfboards right here um, you know your basic outline round pin my whole thing is is the bottom is uh, the a wave is elliptical so you want an elliptical outline and then the same the bottoms we kind of almost went back to the old single fins we're really straight through here and we just have slight nose kick. We're going to put the least amount of nose kick you can that still won't catch it when it's barely. And then on the round pin, when you mark fins, you kind of want to put your hand here and make it a squash, then mark the fins up. And that way, with the fins being moved up a little bit, you got a board with a fast bottom and you get vertical because we've eliminated that great big old huge fin on the three fin that they stuck way back on the tail of the round pins. Round pins actually got a bad reputation because the fins were stuck so far in the tail, you know, they don't work when the waves are juicy or bigger. So they did, you know, they moved those fins back so far, it made them stiff. This is your basic uh, medium sized guy. It's your basic chippy kind of board, you know. It seems like every board I make has a bit of a change to it because as we all look different, somebody wants a different size, a little bit different length and width and thickness and all, everything like that. Do you guys have some questions you wanted to ask? Uh, yeah. Okay. You was asking, and here's what we cut them with, the planer. See this? This is a Skill 100 planer, and this particular one has a grit on it right here. And then I have another one over here, and it has the blades on it. Right there, you can see the blades. So I use on this on epoxy ones and dropping rails, and this if I got to cut stringers. And that's how you cut most of the meat off. And then, We've got your good old shear form right here. This is your basic, I'm lucky, I got one of the old shear forms that were made back in the 70s. This thing's really good, hard to find anymore. And you use a shear form on it, and of course you've got all your different kind of sandpapers and stuff to do all the rest of the work. What do you think? Good. Okay. I have another question. Go ahead. How long have you been doing this job? 250 years. That's a long so, time. Yeah, that is a long time. I've been shaping about 40 years now. I can't tell everybody how old I am. That's not good. I have no idea how old you are anyway. Oh, you do? Well, that's pretty sneaky. <laughs> and over here, we have all the templates. Those are the longboard templates, the stand-ups paddleboard templates. And these are all the templates here for the shortboards. You know, this is known as a quarter template. Here's the tail, and here's the nose. They call these quarter templates. And of course, the ones you saw on the wall for the longboards, those are full-length templates. And there's all different kind of curves we can make on boards. Amazing amount of curves you can put on them. You know what's pretty interesting though is um, almost the best stand-up and surfboard is a happy medium of everything you ever learn. You don't want to get too radical with anything. Of course, we want a fast bottom. That's important. Do you have any sons? I have two sons. Where are they? They're 17 and 20 and they're at home right now. Do they, do a, do they ride on boards? Yeah, they do. Uh-huh. Yeah. How many boards do you have? Oh, maybe about um, 150. That's a lot. Yeah, but I'll sell them all. <laughs> Alrighty. I'm going to show you how to shape a board and all the tricks how to do it. Give me five on that, bro. All right. Now, first we start out with this blank right here. This is just your basic blank. I actually had to glue these in here to make them a little bit wider for the bigger guys. So anyway, we got your basic blank here. And you start out with measuring about how long it is. You run your old tape measure down here like so and you make it the length that you would like it. Then 
you measure across here and get your width right dead center in the middle of the board and then from the nose you're going to measure a foot back that's standard uh, industry procedure foot back and then you take your measurement there and the same thing at the tail here you measure foot up and across and then once that you have got all those numbers on there it's like a little jigsaw puzzle all you do is match up the lines you take your template and you match up to the tail just right in the middle and then your dot you put here and the dot you put here and then you draw that line and of course you flip it and do the other side then you do you flip it and do it oh you'll flip the uh, over here and then the same thing you'll connect the dot 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 and then to the tail here you draw that out and then what you do is you'll flip that template over like this which is the nose and then you'll take this and this is like a French curve actually so you'll take this template here and you'll just blend it in and as soon as that line blends into the other line here you draw that you got your nose and much easier way to do it is take your saber saw here and cut out the outline and then then you clean up the outline get it good and then you take the skill 100 planers over here and then you take the planer to it and plane this thing plane it all up like this and that's the way you get your uh, rough shape and then you're going to come back and drop these rails a bit right here and then you'll finish shaping the board you'll finish fine shaping is what they call that and then we'll get it, make it all look nice and smooth and we'll come over here and put a nice tucked under edge tucked rail here all the way and that's how we do it so when you do it with uh, computer shaping what it does all that for you? Yeah, I'm sorry I don't have a computer's blank here to show you, but there's a bunch of lines that are elliptical like this. And what you do is you, ha you take a board, your favorite board, have it scanned, and then you um, take a blank and it'll cut that thing perfect to the, what the scan is. Okay. And it, but most boards now from the newer shapers are computer shaped or? Well, yeah, a lot of people do computer shaped boards. It's a great thing, you can get them symmetrical because a lot of the blanks aren't that symmetrical so it makes it a lot easier to get a real symmetrical board. The trouble with computer shaping is if you want to alter those too much from what you scan, that's when you're going to start running into problems and you're, you're going to get a blasé shape. So what do you prefer? I like to do both. Well, personally, it's nice to shape a computer board because I can shape seven boards, computer shape or eight, in the same time it takes me to do one by hand. It's a lot of work to shape a board by hand especially the epoxy ones with this new foam that doesn't suck water at all, XTR. They're definitely a little more trickier to shape than your regular um, US foam or the styrofoam too. So this kind of foam that you're using is XTR. It looks more like the poly foam, huh? There's, it's not the beaded type foam. Exactly. Uh, yeah, the beaded foam you'd use for the, on the stand-up paddle boards because they're so big you need the light foam. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But these are glass with epoxy. Same thing with the beaded foam. If you take a drop of resin put on here, it'll eat a hole right through it. So this, they need to, they need to be glassed with epoxy. Epoxy is the only thing that won't eat a hole through this stuff. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you're finding more people want you to hand shape it or computer shape it? Well, that's kind of up to me. You know, the computer shape ones, if I got them close to the thing, then I'll do it. But I do such a variety of boards that I have to probably hand shape 30% of them at least because they're quite different. You find that people appreciate it when it's hand shaped all the way more or not necessarily no not necessarily you know yeah they do actually if they say oh he hand shaped it great it wasn't popped out on a computer shape like that but um, with me it's all the same because you know I do everything I can to make the best possible board I can make did you buy this shop or did you make it well actually I'm just renting it but I built the whole shop the way I wanted it so it fits everything Except my racks are a little bit short for uh, stand-ups. They're kind of big. But we're making smaller ones now, which is great. Finally, we're getting to make small stand-ups because they work way better. They're much faster. The longer a board becomes, the slower it is, and the reactionary time to do it is slower. So a lot of your 11, 12-foot boards are a bit dangerous to use in the surf. Try get a smaller board. Safer and way faster, way more fun. And you'll progress a lot better, too. Why don't you make boards out of wood anymore. I do sometimes but they're quite heavy and they're quite a bit of work too but they are very pretty but they're a little bit heavy. 
They're a lot of fun to make. They make beautiful wall hangings or for bigger waves because they're a bit heavy, but they're pretty. You know, wood's very pretty when it's done. What's like the hardest step, like cutting it or? Well, just working on it because wood's much harder than this foam right here. Much, much harder. This is a bit softer, so it shapes a lot easier than wood. But it's a lot of fun to work with wood. I get to work with wood a bit, and I really enjoy working with wood. Do you play like other sports, or do you just do one? Just one. No, I like to. I like to throw the baseball. I like to shoot baskets, and I like water skiing. Do you play any instruments? Yes. Uh huh. I have my guitars over here, and I got my shop set up with a big ghetto system in it, so I can play to ZZ Tops and a bunch of other good music like that. Can you play <laughs> like a tune? Uh-huh, yeah. Someone's yes. Code. No, they're dropping it off. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. That paddle looks like it fits you pretty good. You ready to get out in the water? Mm, yeah. Let's go talk to Mom and see if we can get her out in the water.